Well, hey, listen, thanks for coming out this morning. Uh, exciting announcement today that's really a culmination of several years worth of work between uh, the city of Albuquerque and Code for America to bring these three fellows that I'm going to introduce in just a minute to our city to work with us and work with my office to really continue to make Albuquerque a top level government in a lot of ways. And I'll tell you what that means to me. And I'll also tell you what it means, I think, to, for, in, for Code for America. And Sid Harrell's going to talk a little bit more about that. But if you look up Code for America, it's a nonprofit. And they talk about government for the people, by the people. They talk about 21st century government. And this is exactly what we've been working on for the last five years in the city of Albuquerque. I call it reinventing government. And every day we go to City Hall and we talk about how we can make government better for the people that we serve. And a lot of that has to do with services and how we provide them. And a lot of that has to do with being on the leading edge of technology. Uh, last year, in 2014, Albuquerque was actually voted uh, the ninth best city, uh, top ranked city for digital cities in the United States. And that's not an accident. We've made a lot of investments. Um, Mark Leach, who's with us here today, um, is kind of my open data guy. Uh, we've led the way in a lot of ways for transparency and accountability for government around the country. And we've done that through open data sets. And so we started looking at, at, at a lot of different challenges and opportunities in our city. And one of those is economic mobility. And Gary Opadal is here, my, develop, or my director of economic development. And so much of what we're doing in Albuquerque from an economic standpoint is to try to change the trajectory of our local economy. We know that we're uh, overly reliant on a couple of sectors. We're a company town, so to speak, that company being government. Uh, we want to make sure that we bolster that. We want to make sure Sandia Labs, uh, Kirtland Air Force Base, AFRL, and others continue to flourish here because they bring so much good to our community and for national security. But we also want to help people who aren't in that sector um, to thrive and to be more economically mobile. And, and through a series of deep dives and things that we've done in the city of Albuquerque, we know that connection to opportunities is key for that. So Code for America, and Sid can talk about this in just a minute, does lots and lots of different things uh, around the country. They work with, um, they work with cities to on, on health issues, education issues, public safety issues, um, food access issues. Well, in Albuquerque, we're going to be working on, uh, on economic mobility. And we're going to do that to try, by trying to remove barriers for our citizens, uh, whether it's accessing social services or um, getting close to, asset, <coughs> excuse me, close to assets and resources so that they can uh, get the help that they need and streamline in that information. So picture yourself out in our community. You want to be more economically mobile. You've got the gumption to do that. You've, you've got everything that you need except you don't have those connections in place. So we went out to, to Code for America, started talking about the city of Albuquerque, all the great things that we thought we were doing, but, but also understanding that we need some expertise that we just don't have at City Hall. And that's what this is all about this morning. We're going to match citizens in need with critical information and services, and we're going to continue to strengthen uh, Albuquerque as a place to innovate, and I think that's uh, vitally important. So yesterday at lunch, uh, I had a wonderful opportunity to meet these three gentlemen uh, that are next to me, and uh, William Tyner is here. Uh, Will? Will? Will is here. Uh, Yaniv Zemet is here. Did I say Zemet correctly? Yes. That didn't sound very calm. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 know, I know it's uh, Yaniv, Yaniv uh, Zemet, and then Jenny Tana is here also. And these gentlemen are going to be our fellows. So they're going to be housed right across to the hall from me uh, on the 11th floor at City Hall. Gary was nice enough to move a couple walls around in his office and make some space for these guys because this is such important work. So I'm going to let them talk, and then I'm going to bring uh, Sid Harrell up to talk a little bit about uh, Code for America and what they think they can do here. But Will is going to give a few comments on behalf of the fellows first. Will? Thank you very much, Mayor Barry. Uh, my name is Will Tyner, and I'm an ethnographic researcher and designer. Um, here with me, as Mayor Barry mentioned, we have uh, Jennings Hanna and uh, Yaniv Zemet, a uh, designer and a web developer on, on our team. And together we have 20 years of experience, over 20 years of experience in um, a number of industries from education, technology, and design. Um, in partnership with the mayor's office, we are excited to strengthen key capabilities um, in Albuquerque um, in terms of their um, community and local government and um, by bringing what we know to the table, which is an iterative, user-centered, and data-driven approach uh, to solving problems. Having worked in the private sector and seen its ability to scale innovations uh, across the, the economy and uh, create new jobs and industries, we are excited to, to bring what we know um, and help Albuquerque uh, connect citizens to it, critical information. 
Um, Albuquerque is not only a beautiful place with a, a vast landscape, but it also has a richly textured community and history um, that we're excited to explore. Um, and we are honored by the opportunity uh, to, to before us and uh, very thankful and grateful for the trust that you all have placed um, in us. Um, and we look forward to a very uh, fruitful partnership in the coming year. Thank you very much. Thanks, Will. I told these guys at lunch yesterday, get ready for some hard work because we, the team we have at City Hall, um, whether it's uh, Gary and his team or my team at the office, uh, we come to work every day and we roll up our sleeves and we really get after it. And uh, I look forward to the energy. I look forward to the expertise. Uh, really interesting gentlemen. You should get to know them. And we want to make sure that they feel welcome in our community as well. So we're already talking about interesting things they can do in Albuquerque. And of course, uh, it's important for us as a city too. I want these guys to have a great year here so they can go back uh, and tell folks uh, how great our great, you know, our city is. So we've got several folks from Code for America here. We have Sid Harrell, who's the products director and the UX, UX expert at Code for America. And she's going to speak in just a minute. Uh, but we also have Becca Blazak, who's the fellowship coordinator at Code for America. And of course, the, the three gentlemen that you just uh, were introduced to. So I'm going to let Sid Harrell come up and talk a little bit about um, what she thinks Code for America can bring to the equation in Albuquerque. Sid? Thank you so much, Mayor Barry, and thank you for your partnership as we've gotten ready to start the fellowship and for the warm welcome for our fellows to Albuquerque. So the Code for America Fellowship is a one-year service fellowship for technology professionals who want to use their skills for the public good. And it pairs professionals like these gentlemen with innovators within City Hall like Mayor Barry and Mark and Gary and everyone here who's worked hard. And what they do is over the course of a year, they build something together. You'll notice that there isn't a spec sheet for what they're going to build in Albuquerque this year, although they're going to work in the area of connecting people with resources to bring economic development. But they work, as Will said, in an iterative and user-centered way. And so what that means is that what actually gets built emerges out of the conversations that they have with people in the community and people within City Hall to understand where the greatest need is and where their work can have the greatest impact. So, it might be, as it was in Oakland in 2013, that they would rebuild the public record system of a city so that citizens and public servants can interact much more positively and fruitfully in the exchange of public information. It might be, as in New Orleans in 2012, where they built a system to integrate seven databases from seven different city departments so that any citizen could look up what the status of a blighted property was after Hurricane Katrina and take an action to improve their own neighborhood. It might be as it was in Long Beach last year that they would have a very clear brief to improve the number of visits by high flyers to local emergency rooms and that they might figure out that initially they were thinking of high flyers as people and in fact it worked much better to think of high flyers as addresses after some testing. So they built an application called Address IQ that identifies where frequent flyers are coming to emergency rooms from and gives public servants the tools and first responders the tools to actually reduce those numbers. So the way that this works, uh, how the year works, is the fellows come to San Francisco in February for a month of orientation to local government and to the particular tools and practices that we use at Code for America. And then on February 1st, they arrive in their cities, as these guys did this weekend, and start a month of residency as members of the community. And they are always partnered with innovators within City Hall, and they also do their best to make tons of community connections. Um, they'll probably have more than 100 official meetings during the course of the month, and at the same time, they'll be spending a lot of their nights talking to people in neighborhoods and understanding where there is need. At the end of February, they'll be coming back to San Francisco to base themselves with the rest of their class and with the resources of the California technology industry at their disposal. But they'll be back and forth to Albuquerque several times. As Will said, they're going to be working in an iterative and test-driven and user-centered method, which means they're going to be right alongside the innovators within City Hall. And they're very quickly going to put things out in front of the public that may not be finished to test whether those ideas are good and to push them forward into the next round. So there will be a lot of interaction and what they build will be truly built together. This is a way of working that is practiced at the best and uh, brightest, for lack of a better word, companies in the technology industry. And these guys all have strong experience in doing it and they're very excited to work with people who have strong experience in bringing innovation to City Hall and to be here in Albuquerque. So thank you all of you for your welcome. So thanks a lot. We'll, we'll take questions in just a minute, but I want you to think a little bit globally about what we're trying to do here. 
Um, well, I talked earlier about changing the trajectory of our local economy and, and creating economic mobility. So a lot of times people think about tech transfer, and we're certainly doing first of this kind um, you know, programs for that with, with Innovate ABQ, with the University of New Mexico, with our innovation district downtown. Uh, when you talk about economic mobility and, and well-being economically, you think about um, you know, all the research that we do here. We, we want to we celebrate that. But a lot of times when I go out as a mayor and I speak to people, um, there's a lot of folks in our community that are underemployed. And they're out there making eight, ten dollars an hour when in fact they have the ability and the skill sets to make much more than that. But they lack the connections. They lack uh, the services that they need. It might be a single mom who can't get to the job interview because they, they can't find anybody uh, to provide child care. Or worse, they leave a child in the car. We saw that in the news a couple times around the United States last year. Um, it may be someone who uh, has all the ability to connect with a company, but they don't have any way of proving to that company that they have those skills. So we have Talent Albuquerque that we started here. We have 35 skill-up centers around the city now. We talked about this at lunch yesterday, where you can go in and test to the five skills that 95% of all jobs in America require. And maybe life got in the way and you didn't get your high school diploma or maybe you didn't get your uh, college degree, but, but maybe you've got those innate, that innate ability and the gumption to go out there and do great things. We want you to be able to connect to those in our community that are creating jobs. So this is, this is about social services, this is about employment opportunities, uh, and most of all, it's just about streamlining. Uh, we're, we're coming into a, an era now where we're going to be a one-click world, right? Uh, you know, I could, sit, I could stand here and then the time it takes me to say the next two sentences, I could order a pair of shoes online. <laughs> well, you know, why can't we do better for the citizens of Albuquerque and then show um, other communities around the country how to do it right. And I know a lot of the things that Code for America has done, for example, in Oakland, um, we're looking at those programs. They did a, um, a streamlined permitting process in California as well. What city was that, I can't remember? That was Santa Cruz. That was in Santa Cruz. We're looking at that here as well. So what mayors do around the country is we look for opportunities to take things to scale. A lot of things we're doing here. Homework Diner can go to scale nationally. We're helping kids with their homework. Running Start for Careers, where we brought an interest curriculum into the high schools, is, is getting national attention. Talent Albuquerque is getting national attention. So I have every expectation and, and all the optimism in the world that what's going to come out of this effort in the next year is going to be a world-class opportunity for our citizens. And then I'll be pleased and, and honored to share that with mayors around the country. So we're very excited. Uh, it took us a while to get here. Uh, I think we're one of only eight cities in America that Code for America has selected. And let's be honest, this is a competitive process to get these guys into your town. Is you don't just walk in and, and say, "Hey, I need you." Um, they, 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 I assume we went through some. There's some rigor uh, to be selected as a, fel <laughs> as a as a fellowship city. And uh, I've been to their offices in San Francisco. Just love the energy, and we're real proud to have you here. And look forward to a great year. With that, why don't you? If you have any questions, these folks are available. We talked you out. <laughs> Dan, Dan Mayfield. You talked a little bit about some of the workforce development stuff and how do you guys see that fitting in? Maybe that's one example of many, I think. But I mean, how would you design an app program that would maybe leverage some of those city services? Well, when we gave them a week to build something in January. Yeah, I think I think without it's much access, honestly, we, we do a little practice build week in January so that they can work as a team for the first times. They were all strangers on January first. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, well, sure. Come on, come on, in, Jennings. So can yeah, you. we built. Um, my name is Jennings. Um, I'm a designer, um, and in our build week, um, we built uh, an application around hiring extras. So. One of the things we looked at was that the city of Albuquerque has had a lot of economic activity around filmmaking. Um, so we just built a really quick prototype of an application that would allow people in the city to sort of take a selfie and sign up as an extra, a potential extra. And the idea was that a student or someone that worked part time could maybe make some money on their day off. Um, and it was just very simple, but we believe in a very iterative process as we talked about. And one of the things is sort of getting these small wins. Um, so it, if it's just giving someone some extra money on their day off, um, I know that's not like a huge change and it maybe doesn't go to scale, but it does, it does sort of give people an idea of like, you know, what, what type of thinking we might be doing. Right. Mm -hmm. So Dan, another way of looking at this as well is if you think about kind of like what goes on with Amazon shopping, 
you might be shopping for a particular, a particular product. And this is an analogy, it's not necessarily the way these guys are going to go, but, but if you imagine Amazon shopping, you're, you're looking for a pair of shoes. And then you look kind of like about halfway at the bottom of the page and it says other customers who, who viewed this product might also be interested in. And then being able to link with those services, so it might be um, workforce, uh, it might be college, it could be uh, um, childcare services. So bringing in all those different services from all, di all the different government entities and placing them in one convenient place. Yeah, we, we, we talked about that. You know, let's say you're let's say you're uh, a family that's on EBT, and um, we've heard stories about how difficult it can be to sign up for that, and sometimes it's an arduous process. Well, that gets in the way also of being economically mobile because you're spending all your time trying to get your your food stamps, in essence. Um, what what Mark's talking about is is what if you know if you're on that page, what if it says, hey, listen, do you know all about the earned income tax credit? Have you really maximized your opportunities there? Have you, you know, do you need child care? Do you need some other services that might dovetail in with where you find yourself today um, that's getting in your way of where you want to find yourself tomorrow? So, so the process here for the next month is, um, you know, you guys will be kind of working across the hall from each other and it's really just kind of getting a lay of the land and walking out into the community and trying to identify where the gaps are and where the needs are and then developing out of there? Yeah, and then what we'll do is we'll let these gentlemen join us with our, you know, we've been doing a lot of deep dives in the community. This has been going on for over a year, um, where we're meeting with groups of immigrant entrepreneurs, for example. We're meeting with uh, urban farmers. We're meeting with, with people out there who are struggling to do better. And so we have a lot of baseline data on that. In fact, I have, I think, one today again, uh, a deep dive with a small business community. And so we'll bring them into that, but I also want them to go out and just on their own, you know, find out what's going on in the community. I've got some folks in my office, Frank Mitterball, Hakeem Bellamy, and others that, that they can tie into um, some really interesting conversations, whether it's at kitchen tables or whether it's at, at, you know, in auditoriums or whatever it happens to be.